Australia, the largest continent without high-speed rail. Until now, imagine cutting travel times between Sydney and Melbourne from 11 painful hours to just 4, or zipping from Brisbane to Sydney in the same amount of time. Is Australia finally building a high-speed route after years of trying and failing to do so? But we have seen this before. Australia has tried to build high-speed rail for decades, but it never happened. In 1981, the Institution of Engineers proposed the Bicentennial High Speed Rail project, linking Adelaide, Melbourne, Canberra and Sydney, and also Brisbane. But the focus wasn't on blazing fast trains, it was about marginal improvements to existing tracks and diesel-electric trains. The result? Sydney to Melbourne in 9 hours. Not exactly revolutionary. Then came the 1984 proposal by CSI. RO, spearheaded by Dr. Paul Weil. Inspired by France's TGV, this plan would connect Melbourne, Canberra and Sydney with a coastal corridor, but the underestimated cost of by $1.5 billion reduce derailed it before it even left the station. In 1986, the very fast train joint venture had big ambitions. Private sector proposal of a 350 km per hour link between Sydney, Canberra and Melbourne. But the government's refusal to approve some necessary tax incentives doomed the project. By 1991, it was dead. But perhaps the most interesting experiment happened in 1995. Three X2000 cars from Sweden were hired by Australian operator CountryLink for evaluation proposals, being one driving trailer, one bistro car and one first class car. The trains were towed in a push-pull mode by a modified XPT power cars. They were used on the Sydney to Canberra services from April to June 1995. You might know that Amtrak also did something similar to this with the X2000s. The X2000s are definitely a peculiar piece of rail stock history. They tried expanding internationally but today it only remains strong in Sweden. 2017 saw a peculiar project. While its route remained similar, what made it unique was the proposal to build eight new cities inland within this high-speed line. While a cool idea, the truth is that, while big, Australia doesn't have the population to sustain this. So here we are, once again at the starting line. This time the approach is smaller, more focused and maybe, just maybe, more realistic. So, you're telling me there's a chance. The Newcastle-Sydney corridor might not be as flashy, but it's a necessary first step to make high-speed rail in Australia a reality. So how would this proposed route actually look like? While Australia is a huge country the size of a continent, most of its population lives on the east coast. Australia's east coast is booming, with 21.5 million people already living between Brisbane, Sydney, Canberra and Melbourne, and projections showing that the number is climbing to 28.5 million by 2051. The current infrastructure is struggling to keep up. Enter high speed rail, a transformative solution that could change how Australians live, work and travel. Connecting these cities could change the economic landscape forever. So someday you might be able to take a high-speed train from Melbourne, arrive in Canberra, the actual capital city of Australia, then move into Sydney and Brisbane on the Gold Coast. Yes, I'll finally be able to see Warner Brothers Movie World Australia. The East Coast is home to Australia's biggest population centers. Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane are not just the country's economic powerhouses, they are cultural and political hubs too. Connecting the cities with high-speed rail could transform how Australians live and work. Now let's take a deeper dive into each city. Melbourne, Australia's second large city, known for its vibrant art scene, coffee culture and being the sports capital of the nation. A high-speed rail connection to Sydney could reduce the need for short-haul flights, making trips more convenient, maybe cheaper and even more sustainable. Canberra, often overlooked, it's the nation's capital, right in the middle of Sydney and Melbourne. Better connectivity could unlock its potential as a residential and political hub, making it more accessible for commuters and tourists alike. I just wish they built this version of the city instead. Sydney, Australia's largest city and a global gateway. I mean, everybody knows Sydney and uh, Luna Park, of course. Whether you're visiting for business, sightseeing at the Opera House or simply catching a wave at Pawnee Beach, Sydney is a critical anchor 
for any rail network. Brisbane, the sunny layback capital of Queensland, could benefit from this high-speed route. By linking Brisbane to Sydney in just 4 hours, the high-speed route could supercharge regional tourism and foster, and foster business connections between the two cities. The project also includes stops at regional centers like Newcastle, a city with growing potential. These smaller stops are more than just points on a map, they represent opportunities for regional development. High-speed rail has the potential to bring different kinds of people together. Business, politicians and people that just want to surf on the Gold Coast. Imagine leaving Newcastle and commuting to Sydney in just an hour. This kind of connectivity could unlock more affordable housing options and spread economic growth to regional areas. It's not just a train, it's a solution to Australia's housing crisis. Giving people more choices about where to live without sacrificing job opportunities or quality of life. Or at least, that's what the government wants to see happening. Realistically speaking, this could result in more urban sprawl. This is not going to solve the housing crisis, unfortunately. The housing crisis is an issue of supply and demand. The suburbs are already super expensive. By building this high-speed route and opening up stations, you're going to increase the prices of said houses. This new National East Coast Railway could change Australia forever. With travel times between Sydney to Brisbane in 4 hours and Sydney to Melbourne in 4 hours is a huge change compared to the current 11 painful hours it takes to travel between these cities. Flights between the cities are very popular and expensive, so why not bring in some competition and comfort? The Australian High Speed Rail Authority said this could be a new dedicated high-speed railway instead of upgrading existing lines. Australia's time has come. Over the last decade, investments in rail infrastructure like the Sydney Metro, Melbourne Metro have developed a skilled construction workforce. These projects have showcased to Aussies that trains do matter, with 100 billion dollar reduce already invested. The nation is ready to take the leap into high-speed rail. It seems as if Australian High-Speed Rail Authority is taking a page from Cashar, the California High-Speed Rail, as they are building the part of the route that nobody cares first, Sydney to Newcastle. The initial phase focuses on the Newcastle to Sydney corridor, a vital link between New South Wales' largest cities. Currently, this trip takes about two and a half hours by car or train, with frequent delays caused by freight trains and congestion. High-speed rail promises to slash this journey to just one hour, but most Australians are skeptical about this project. However, this time it's different. At least, let's hope the current effort by high-speed rail authority differs from past attempts in Kiwis. By starting with Sydney to Newcastle, the government aims to prove high-speed rail's viability on a manageable scale before tackling larger, costier projects. With nearly 7,000 kilometers of high-speed rail in operations worldwide, the case for high-speed rail as a proven solution to congestion, emissions and connectivity has never been stronger. The push for high-speed rail in Australia comes at a pivotal moment. Roads and existing rail infrastructure are reaching capacity. While earlier proposals failed to gain traction, the current effort builds on several key developments that make high-speed rail more viable than ever before. High-speed rail can connect regional centers to city, supporting economical growth and reducing housing pressures. At least that's what the government thinks. And hey, if you enjoyed this deep dive into Australia's high-speed rail journey and want to explore more stories about rail transit and infrastructure, make sure to hit that subscribe button. This capybara has a lot more coming your way. By addressing these challenges now, the High Speed Rail Authority aims to ensure Australia doesn't miss out on the transformative benefits of High Speed Rail, but this project is also a political play. The current party will probably be ousted in the next election, so this project could be a last-minute effort to gain popularity. Let's hope that after the elections this become a bipartisan project. But this project is also geopolitical in a sense. If you really think about it, why not just renovate the existing lines? Sure, it will not reduce travel times by a lot, but it would work wonders. Why build high-speed rail? Well, prestige. Most first world countries have high-speed rail, and so building a line in Australia would showcase that Australia is up to par with Japan, China and even France. As a capybara, I get it. Starting small might not feel revolutionary, but You've got to crawl before you can zoom at 300 km per hour. Still, the history lesson is clear. If Australia wants high-speed rail to become a reality, bold leadership, political support are essential. Let's not let this dream get derailed again.
So when will it happen? First we'll need 2 years of development. If it's approved, then it would be 10 years of construction, so not in time for the Olympics, unfortunately. I guess this capybara is going to have to wait. So will high speed rail finally happen in Australia? The groundwork is laid, and while we've seen many false starts before, this time there's a sense of cautious optimism. With a phased approach, a dedicated high speed rail authority and a growing recognition of the need for sustainable efficient transport, the dream feels closer than ever. Imagine a future where you can hop on a train in Sydney and arrive in Melbourne in just a few hours. It's not just about cutting travel times, it's about connecting different cities and reshaping the way Australians live and work. But as history has shown, ambition alone isn't enough. Strong leadership, clear planning and sustainable public support will be crucial to turning this vision into reality. And while it might not be Olympics ready, the Newcastle to Sydney line is a step in the right direction. A chance to prove that high-speed rail can work here. This capybara is crossing its paws for success. What do you think? Are we finally on track or is Australia still chasing a dream? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see more trains, well, I have just a thing for you. Click this video on the screen right now.